Hey there, Dave Philatus, Scanning and Missing Project, copyrighted edition for our video channel. And our executive producer, Hawk, is in the house and she's doing good. She just went for a good hike. She got her feet all wet, then she got brushed. Yeah, yeah. Shake. Oh, it's a good girl. Yeah, it's a good girl. Thank you. Thank you. The people appreciate you being out here. It's a good girl. What do you say? What do you hear? What is that? What is that? <laughs> okay, enough of Huck. And uh, we're going to get right into it. It's a Skinwalker edition for June 20th, 2023. I'm a little late with this one, and I apologize. But uh, this has been an unbelievable summer so far. Very busy. Lots going on. Lots of good stuff going on for you guys that uh, will pay dividends in the future, trust me. And uh, the last couple of days have been all over the U.S. in just a very short period of time. And my head's still spinning and I've gotten total lack of sleep the last three days. So I just got around to watching uh, the Skinwalker episode and a couple things to say. First of all, I got trashed by some people on our channel here, on our comments. Dave, what are you saying so many negative things for? Friends, if you don't want to hear a true perspective on production value and if they could do better, then you should just leave. Don't watch this. And then there's a group of people who just trash the guys that are doing the work. And if you think so negatively about the topic, just leave. Don't watch it. Why even come and watch if you have, think so negatively about Travis and the researchers that are at Skinwalker Ranch? They're doing the best they can, and I've explained this to you. <clears throat> Each one of these represents a week, maybe two weeks. And if they don't get anything to perform, what are they going to do? And as I've stated many times, Bigelow's team went months sometime with nothing happening. These guys are doing the best job they can with the resources they've got. And I admire the persistence in them. And my comments are about the producers in that they need some blood to get in there, some new blood to reinvigorate this. And I don't blame Travis or Thomas or any of those guys for what they're doing. No, this, that isn't about them. Tonight's episode was way better. Uh, I enjoyed it immensely. They brought in some uh, new technology specialists that were, that were out of this world. <clears throat> now, at the start of the episode, they started showing the drill site again. Now, they've done this on multiple episodes, and then there's nothing more about the drill site. <laughs> it's a real conundrum to me about why the producers keep putting this in, but I don't know. They did say that they've been drilling there for two weeks and they've gone down 20 feet. Did I catch that right? And the anomaly is 40 feet down. How could anyone make money being a driller going only 20 feet in two weeks? I don't understand that. Then they went to the command center and they described a physicist named Jeremiah Pate. And he owned a company called Luna Sound. And he's the CEO. And he invented technology. It's a low frequency instrument that uses radio waves. And they fly it on a weather balloon and they go up 70,000 feet. And this technology penetrates, penetrates the ground and makes a 3D map of the subsurface. Sort of like an aerial survey. And there's sensors on a tether underneath the balloon. And they record and they photograph as it ascends. This sounds very cool. They're going to put it above the triangle. 
and they said it took several weeks to get back all of the raw data. Now they have balloons, they have a balloon at the top, and then they have four cameras, and then they have their instruments and other sensors measuring the electronic field, etc. Right away I like this because people that are in the UFO field care about the magnetic field and the electronic field a lot. Because a lot of the anomalies that occur with UFOs, seeing them, being around them, etc., affect those type of things in our environment regularly. And they brought in, they jumped back and they did uh, introduce a man named Corey Reed. And Corey was a deputy sheriff, or he is a deputy sheriff, from the Ute Nation. In the early 2000s, he reported going onto a neighbor's property. When he was a conservation officer for the Ute tribe for 13 years. And when he went onto this adjacent property, he found two dead horses with the organs removed and them being dead. And then he said, and around the bodies, he found these giant three-toed tracks. Well, three-toed tracks aren't talked about much in the cryptid world for a multitude of reasons. First of all, I've seen many three-toed tracks that look identical to five-toed tracks, just minus two toes, in an area where there's a ton of Bigfoot activity. Now, the conventional res researcher won't even tell you that the, they found these because they don't want to throw you off course. Bigfoot's got to be this big, hairy monster that scares people and abducts people and kills people and has five toes and anything that deviates from that you're probably not going to hear much about it but the truth is three toe tracks are very common in certain parts of the united states and specifically that area around new york pennsylvania west virginia ohio lots of three toe tracks but you don't hear about this see now, since Corey brought it up, I wanted to tell you that his representation of what he saw, I believe, is factual. And without somebody standing up and saying, oh, this, this is pretty common, a lot of people may poo-poo what he saw. Now, when he said that uh, the cavity of the horse and all the innards were out, that's pretty weird, I gotta say. It sounds more like a Bigfoot kill than a mutilation type of kill. Now, cattle mutilations, typical signs. Bore around the eye, part of the lip removed, part of the anal cavity removed. Usually the insides are not disturbed, drained of blood. The deaths that he described were more like a consumption death someone wanted to consume the animal and kill them. So, when he said that he tried to find the report in the photographs he took months later and he couldn't, I wouldn't say that's surprising. Because as I've told you before, and I'll say it again, Harvey Pratt, one of my best, best buddies, Oklahoma Bureau of Investigation for 40 plus years. He did lots of work uh, with the Bureau of Indian Affairs Police. And when they went to court with BIA investigators and the investigators tried to get their reports, tried to get their own reports, they couldn't get them and their department didn't even know where they went. This is true. Harvey has told me this more than once. So anything related to Native American and reports, something strange is going on. And I'm just telling you the truth. So, three toed tracks, believable.
Then they brought on David Mason, an inventor, and they used rocket and mortars and high, high, super high-end thermal cameras made by FLIR. And what they were going to do is they were going to send a mortar up and send a rocket up. Eventually explode them both and see if they could cause a reaction in this area of the ranch to see if the anomal anomaly would respond. And on one of the first launches, it appeared as though the rocket hit the mortar. And that literally is just like they said on the show, that's like a bullet hitting a bullet. The chances are so minimal of that happening. So the explanation, the best explanation to that is one didn't hit the other. Something activated the mortar when it was in the air near the rocket to take them both out. And that would seem like a far more plausible explanation than one hitting the other. The mortar went off as the rocket went through it. That's what it was said. Now, when this was happening, Dave Mason, looking through his advanced FLIR cameras, I mean, these things, probably $100,000 each, I'm guessing, super expensive. He noticed that there is an area near where all this was happening that had a different heat pattern than the rest of the environment around it. Now, FLIR picks up heat and then shows you it in different colors. Different points of heat have different colors. And when you saw it on screen, you could see it. It was almost a saucer shape in the background. And then he said, and this is, this is important, folks. He said that it was changing heat and temperature as they were watching it because it was changing colors. Now they tried to look at it on night vision. Night vision, all it is, imagine a binocular that can see in the dark. That's really, in the nutshell, what it is. It uses advanced technology, but it has nothing to do with heat. So in night vision, you can't see any heat differential. All you can see is what's out there, what the human eye could see if it was light out, in essence. So FLIR is much more advanced. And researchers, you got to use both when you're out there looking, otherwise you're going to miss a lot. So they called it a differential FLIR with a heat signature. And they described a number of UAPs in the area. And after the second a rocket shot they made, the UFO was gone. Now, Travis said that was a success because the test triggered the phenomena to respond. Now, let me say this to you again. I've said it in many shows. I don't understand what the point of all these tests are. Somebody out there can tell me, I'm interested. I know what some of you will say, well, it's, it's to gain more audience share. Just keep you interested, keep you watching. But these are scientists. Now, maybe you can think that Travis is paid off and will say anything they want him to say. I don't believe that, but maybe you do. But let me tell you something. These people that own these other companies, I can guarantee to you that they're not going to compromise their ethics for a TV show when they've got an entire career in front of them earning money from their technology. So that's impossible. They're not going to lie for the show. Do I believe Dave Mason saw something unusual? Absolutely. Do I think Corey Reed saw what he saw? Absolutely, because there's people in, in the Department of Conservation that undoubtedly saw his reports. Do I think that Jeremiah Pate, the inventor of that Luna sound, is telling the truth? Heck yeah, the guy's a physicist. He works for a private company. It's not going to lie. So, they get to the portion of the show where they get Jeremiah, who comes back after three days, and he's just crunching numbers the whole time. 
and he has some information about what the balloon and his data points collected above ground in the air above the triangle the first thing they did is they showed the balloon as it gained altitude and it was a gradual perfect launch as Jeremy said a very smooth ascent and then they have all of these data gathering instruments one monitors the magnetic activity and another monitors electronic activity and as Travis explained in physics the magnetic numbers and the electronic numbers rise and fall together and as he stated never in his career has he seen electronics jump and magnetic go down or magnetic go up and electronics go down never except tonight so his balloon is going up and at a point below 10,000 feet they find these anomalies and what Travis said is from a physics perspective he doesn't understand how it could happen and, you, and what happened was as the balloon went over certain points of the ranch and let's say it went over the drill site there was a sudden rise in the electronic field of measurement and a decline in the magnetic field of measurement and it wasn't a, a small little rise Travis said it was like going from one to two thousand it was huge and then he also said that it's possible that these could have these could be what is having the effect on the GPS measurements but he wasn't sure how but that was his explanation you can't see it with the eye you'd have to have these advanced instruments now probably the most interesting part of the whole show for many weeks is when Jeremiah said this not Travis he says that their data, as they were flying along, lost one quarter of a second at one point. Now, friends, data doesn't lose quarters of a second. Data doesn't function like that. It doesn't care where it's at. It functions as a mechanical instrument. But when multiple instruments all lose a quarter of a second, something is up something major is up now i want you to go back and uh if you remember i did a show called vanished for the history channel produced by prometheus who did this and we were investigating missing people and we were investigating the portal avenue multi-dimensional portals and missing time and we brought on a couple of physicists, a father and a son team, to come to Mesa Verde National Park and do an experiment to see if there's a time anomaly inside the park. And why is that? Because an entire group of Native Americans disappeared inside that park and were never accounted for, and nobody knew where they went. It's like they left everything in place and boom, were gone the next second. These were cliff dwelling people. So they set up their experiment and involved a series of lasers. And it took them a good four hours to set this experiment up. And as I was standing there and they activated the electronics, the father and son, after about 15 minutes, shut everything down and they looked at each other and said, I can't believe it. This wasn't acting. These guys are scientists. They were absolutely stunned. 
because there was a huge time anomaly in one of these cliff dwellers in Mesa Verde National Park. Now, if you want to watch it on Vanished, you can go to Amazon and see the segment. It's unbelievable. The guys could not believe that they did it. And they did it again. And they could not believe it was happening. They said it was the first time ever that they had found such a time anomaly anywhere. Important. Why is this important? Because it went to show that there was a possibility of a portal at this location. The same issue that Travis and his team found at Skinwalker Ranch here. Now, Jeremiah was absolutely stunned when he reported this to the team. And why is it big? It's big because they discussed portals, multi-dimensions, etc., wormholes. And because they've had these issues at the ranch for the last 15, 20 years, it could explain a multitude of issues. Now, Travis said, oh, this is the first time ever this has happened. Well, he didn't watch Vanish, did he? Because we proved with a couple of scientists that there was missing time and missing people in one spot. And that was the whole point of Vanished. We interviewed a series of physicists, and then we did this, the experiment. All of them stated that portals are something that's real, wormholes, and that science, is, science has proven it to their own satisfactory for years. It's the only thing is the public just hasn't accepted it, all of it. But you should. There's no doubt it's real. And tonight, when they talk about one quarter of a second, that's a huge amount of time. Huge. And when they talked about the GPS differential in past shows where it went underground, did that happen during that one quarter second delay? Don't know. Or what is happening during that one quarter second delay? Is some is that lost time? Because people who are abducted claim lost time all the time. And is that part of the portal enigma? What I'd like you to do is keep an open mind about this. I'm thoroughly 100% convinced it's real. And I'll say this for the sake of the people out there that are pessimists. If Travis had said this, okay, maybe the he did it for the show. But friends, listen to me. <laughs> please, please, listen. Jeremiah, the owner of a company, is not going to compromise his ethics for some stupid TV show that a lot of people don't even watch. He's got a whole career. He's a young, brilliant man. Okay? Now, I appreciate you watching. I think uh, we're back on track. Fascinating experiments. They brought in some really, really quality individuals for this show. And uh, I'm stoked. So, in the meantime... Continue to follow me on Twitter, David Politis at Can Am Missing, also on Truth Social, our uh, missing persons website, Can Am, a Canadian American missing at yahoo.com. I appreciate you being here. Be nice to your neighbors. Politis out.